Hi everyone, I am so so sorry it's been so long since my last video. Um, I will apologise but I can't actually go into too much detail about why I haven't been around. Um, sadly it's to do with a court case that I'm sorting, um, all to do with like my son sadly. So just know that whilst I haven't been around it's not because I haven't been wanting to make these videos it's literally been a case of I haven't got time at the moment because all my time is taken up researching and doing what I need to do so I haven't been able to crochet much at all like not even on other projects which is really frustrating because I love crocheting so much it really chills me out and helps me to wind down of an evening um, I've had to fit in a little bit here and there because my daughter's having my first grandchild in six weeks so it's been a bit of a surprise we only found out when she was 20 weeks and now she's 33 weeks so she's having a little girl and I'm so excited I can't wait I'm gonna be a very young grandma um, but I'm so looking forward to it so it's, it's a really good bit of news something to look forward to for the I think it'll be around the middle of August that she's here. So anyway, I'm sure you want to get on with crocheting just as much as I do. So we're going to do the Donald Duck square, which is number 17. And all the colours are laid out in front of you. So you've got a white, a royal blue, a black, a bright red, a vanilla and a sunflower. I don't know if you've already looked ahead and gone on to see what this square is like, but actually the square itself is a repeat of number 13, which was the background that we did for Minnie's bow, and also the same for what we did for the Mickey and Minnie faces. So you will need to make a square out of these two colours, the sunflower and the vanilla, and it will come out looking like this when you've finished it, and this is the square that we're going to put Donald's face onto. Um, Obviously, this is one of my least favourite squares because of the colour changes. And, you know, we've discussed this plenty of times before. Um, but it will be a case of just going back and finding the other video because I haven't filmed that one just to save time because it's one that I filmed before just in different colours. So if you can go ahead, refer back to that one, use your vanilla and your sunflower to make your square. And once you've done that, you can come back to the video and we will get on with... Donald's face. I am going to be doing it as a Sum Sum character again, just as I have done with all the other characters so far, because they are so much cuter than the ones that we've been provided with. And I know you did vote saying that you wanted the better looking ones. <laughs> I don't want to brag. I don't want to sound like I'm doing a better job than the magazine. But you did vote and you say you preferred mine. So those are the ones that I'm going to stick with. So I'm just looking at my instructions beside me now. Of course, we're using our four millimeter hook. And we're going to start with the white yarn to make Donald's face. So to start off with, as I said, we're using the white to make Donald's face and we're going to need to make a magic ring, which we've done plenty of times before, but I will show you just how to do it because I know it is the more difficult of the actions. So we've got our wool at the front of our two fingers. Make sure you've got enough hanging down as a tail. We're then wrapping around the back of the fingers and up towards over the front again to make your cross. We're then going to take our hook and go under the top right of the cross and pull through the top left and then turn our hook so you end up with a crisscross like that on your hook. We're then going to go and get the other top left which has now been replaced and you've made that one. This one just here on the magic ring and then pull that one through and you should see there that you've got your loop on the hook. I always like to pick that one out so it's not threaded through. So we've got our complete circle and from there you can tighten or do anything you wish to do just to make sure that that one's firmly secure on your hook. We need to do one chain 
And then for our stitches into the loop, we're going to be doing eight double crochets. So we're going through the loop and pulling up a loop onto our hook. We're then yarning over and pulling that one through and there's our first one. This is never easy. And there's two. three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And we would then pull on the non-working tail to close that loop. Make sure you don't pull too quickly because sometimes your stitches will invert and be tangled. So pull it slowly until you've got that one completely closed. You shouldn't have any hole in the middle at all. We're then going to do two double crochets into each of the eight stitches that we've just done. So if we do two into each of the eight stitches, that means that we will have 16 by the end. So I'm just going to count back to find my first stitch. My first stitch is, sorry, my last stitch is here, which is just one below our hook. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And this one here is my number eight. So I'll be going into that V first. I know it's quite difficult to see the, the white against the white. So I'm going in through here and I'm doing a double crochet and then I need to go back in through the same stitch and do another so I've got two stitches so far. I'll go into the next one, three and four, then we've got five and six, seven, eight, nine, ten, oh, just drop that one. Then into our next stitch, we've got eleven and twelve, thirteen and fourteen, fifteen, and 16. So that is the end of round two. It then says to insert a stitch marker so we know where we're going back to. So I'll just grab one of those. So I've got my stitch marker here. I personally don't use them but because I calculate how many stitches I've got as I just did saying we had to go you know around doing 16 stitches so I know where the start of my circle is because I know how many stitches I've got to count but I am aware that you can only remember exactly how many stitches when you're confident in what you're doing so if you do need to put a stitch marker in it would be a case of just putting it into that next stitch here which I'm going to do now then at least you can see what that will look like and that is in our next stitch. So for our next row which is round three we're going to do two into the next stitch and then one into the one after that and then it'll be two one two one going all the way around so you'll end up with 24 stitches at the end. I really apologise absolutely hammering down with rain so if you can hear anything I've shut the windows but it's really really loud so okay round three we're going to do two stitches into our next stitch and this is why I don't like using stitch markers because I feel they really get in the way so there's one and two and now it's really in my way and then one into your next stitch So we've done three so far. We're doing two into the next one, four, five, and one more, six, then two again, 
seven, eight, and then one, nine, and then two, ten, eleven, and twelve. Two into the next one. Thirteen, fourteen, and fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, and eighteen, nineteen, twenty, and twenty one. And then two in the next one, 22, 23, 23, and one in the next, 24. And that takes us back round to the start again. So for round four, we're doing something similar, but not quite the same. So we're doing two stitches in the next stitch, and then a single, then a single, then two stitches, then a single, then a single, and all the way around, it will add up to 32 stitches. So two in the first one, one, two, and then two singles. So one in that one makes three, one in the next stitch makes four, two in the next, five, and six, and then your two singles, seven, and the next stitch, eight. Then you two, nine, and ten, and then you single, eleven, twelve, you double, thirteen, fourteen, and you two singles, fifteen, and sixteen, you doubles, seventeen. 18 and your two singles, 19 and 20. Your doubles, 21 and 22. Your two singles, 23 and 24. 25 and 26, two singles, 27, 28, and your doubles, 29 and 30, and your two singles, 31 and 32. And there, that is the end of round four. For round five, we're just going to do one double crochet in each stitch round. We've got 32 stitches at the moment. So we're just going to do 32 DCs going all the way around. So into your next stitch. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 
25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32. And then we've got our circle. This is where my adjustment to this pattern will be made because I prefer Donald's face to be circle and I want to keep it this way. Um, the next row in the book actually shows you how to make it sort of, I've just looking back at the picture now, it almost makes it flatter on the sides and makes his face elongated, more of a, how can I show it, <laughs> that kind of shape. That makes sense. Um, so yeah, it makes it a lot straighter on the sides. I don't want to do that. So I'm going to continue and just do one more round of round six. Um, and it will just be adding on to what we did in rounds three and four. So of course we did two DC in round four in one stitch and then two single stitches. What I want to do is do two DC in one stitch and then three single stitches. So by the end of this round, doing it the way I'm doing it, you will have 40 stitches in total. So we're doing two DC into the next stitch. One, two, and then three singles into the next three stitches. Three, four, and five, and then two, six, and seven, and then your three singles, eight, nine, and ten, and then your two, eleven, and twelve, and your three singles, thirteen. 14 and 15 and then get two into the next stitch 16 17 and then your three singles 18 19 and 20 your two 21 22 and your three singles 23, 24, and 25. Your two, 26, and 27, and your three singles, 28, 29, 30, nearly there. Your double, 31, 32, And your three singles, 33, 34, and 35. Your double, 36, and 37. And then your three singles, 38, 39, and 40. So there's that one finished off. You've got your completely round shape. And now we're going to move on to make Donald's beak using the sunflower yellow. Sorry, I forgot to just say we are at the end of this row now. So you do need to fasten that one off. Make sure you need leave enough of a tail so you can sew all the way around onto your square. So for Donald's beak, we're using the sunflower yellow. I have made a change in this. Um, I've also changed the size hook I'm using because I don't know if it's just me, but I think in the square in the magazine, he looks like he's got lip fillers. His beak is so big, it's ridiculous. So I'm using this hook, which is a three millimeter, but I've also changed the stitches. So it still will be smaller if you stick to your four millimeter hook. So it's completely up to you which one you decide to use. You might just end up with a, it'll be literally like a millimetre, it might be a millimetre difference. 
So I've put a slip knot onto my hook and I'm making seven chains. So one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. I'm then going to find my second stitch from my hook. So we don't want the first one away from our hook. We want the second one, which is the V here. And we're going into that one and we're going to do a double crochet. And then into our next stitch, we're going to do a double crochet. Into our next stitch, we're going to do a half treble. So yarn over into that stitch and pull up a loop, yarn over and pull through all three. We're going to do the same stitch into the next stitch of our chain. So go in through, yarn over and pull through all three. You've then got two more stitches or two more chains remaining. So we're going to do double crochets into those stitches as well. So we're just going to pull up a loop and pull through and then the same stitch into this one, yarn over and pull that through. And here's where we'd fasten off. Remember that we need to leave enough of a tail so that we can sew this one onto the face. But if I just show you, if I put that one on the face, it just feels like it's a lot more in proportion, don't you think? I hope you agree with me. Anyway, next we're moving on to the hat. So we'll go back to our four millimeter hook if you're using a different one. And then we need to use yarn D, which is the black. So I've got my black here and I'm going to make a slip knot onto my hook and I'm then going to chain five. So one, two, three, four and five. From there we want to do a double crochet into the second chain from hook and then into each of the next three chains. So we're not starting off with this one close to our hook, we're starting off with the next chain. We're going in through this one and doing a double crochet and then we're going to do a double crochet into each of the next three stitches and luckily you can see them really easily today even though it is black. <laughs> So we're going into the next one, we're doing one more, then another, and then the last one. And then you actually need to fasten that black off. Again, leave enough of a tail um, for sewing. So I finished the base of the hat and fastened it off. I appreciate that's quite difficult to see. And obviously we've got our two tails on the end. Now what we want to do is to join our royal blue into that first stitch. You should be able to see four Vs going along the top there. I know you probably can't, there you go, you can see the holes through them now. So there are four of those in the top and we want to go for the last one on this side. So just here. So I've got my royal blue and I'm going to put my hook into that last stitch on the end and then I'm going to pull that one through like so. I'm then going to chain one just to secure it. Make sure you're picking up, you're not picking up your working yarn tail but you're picking up your working yarn. Okay so do one chain we're then going to do a stitch into that same stitch that we joined into. So we're going back into that one and doing a double crochet. We're then doing one double crochet into each of the next two stitches. I've got a hair again. So we're doing one double crochet into this one and then one double crochet into the next. And then into our last stitch, we want to do two double crochets. So go into your last one, make sure to keep that black yarn out of the way. 
we're doing one and then back into the same stitch and two so we should have six stitches along the top now and we're now turning and working on the other side so this is classed as row three now so we're chaining one and then into that first stitch just here we're doing one half treble and then two trebles so yarn over and into that first stitch pull up a loop so you've got three on the hook yarn over again and pull through all three we're then doing two trebles into that same stitch so go through so you've got three on the hook but we're then pulling through two and pulling through two and we're repeating that again yarn over pull up a loop yarn over pull through two yarn over and pull through two so there is our first stitch complete we're doing one double crochet into the next stitch and then we're skipping a stitch we're then doing five trebles into the next stitch so skip this one we're not going to go into this one we're going to go into the one after and do five trebles so yarn over go through and pull up a loop so you've got three on the hook yarn over pull through two yarn over pull through two and we've done one and then two three four and five we're going to skip the next stitch just here and into our last stitch we want to do one slip stitch and then fasten off so we're going in through here pulling up a loop and then pulling through again and we can fasten off and if we turn that one around that is how our hat looks at the moment so now that I've fastened that one off and I've pulled that end tight and the, the black end tight it looks much more of a better shape now and remember if it doesn't look quite right we can manipulate it and sort of pin it and sew it into place once it's on to our square just remember to make sure that you leave long enough tails for sewing in we're now moving on to the ribbon for the hat so we're using the black again so we want to make a slip knot and put it on our hook and we then need to chain six one two three four five and six from here we want to do one slip stitch into the second chain from the hook so this is my second chain here I'm going to go in through that one and make a slip stitch we're going to do a slip stitch in the next two chains as well one and two we're going to do a double crochet into the next chain and we're then going to chain one and that is it that is your ribbon so fasten that one off and leave enough of a tail for sewing the last thing we need to make is the bow which is made in the bright red we're starting off with a slip knot putting that one onto our hook and then we're then making five chains so one two three four and five we're going to do three double trebles in the fourth chain from the hook so there's our first our second our third and our fourth so we're going in to this one here so yarn over twice around your hook and then go in through 
pull up a loop so we've got four loops on our hook. We want to pull through two, pull through two, and pull through two again. And there is our first double treble. We need to repeat that action into the same stitch. So one, two, and three. And for our last one into the same stitch, pull through two, pull through two, and pull through two. So it should look something like this. We're then going to chain three. One, two, and three. After the three chains, we need to do a slip stitch into the same chain as where we were making our double trebles. So into this one, we're going in through and just making a slip stitch. From here, we want to do a slip stitch into the fifth chain. So that's the next chain along because these ones were into the fourth. So go into the fifth and do a slip stitch. Chain three, one, two, and three. We're then going to do three double trebles into the same chain as the second slip stitch. So wrap around twice and we're going into this one here, not the big one, hole here where we've done our first double trebles. We want to go into the one after. So pull up a loop, pull through two, pull through two, pull through two, yarn over and yarn over again, back in through that same loop, pull through two, pull through two, pull through two, yarn over twice again, back in through that same stitch, pull through two, pull through two, pull through two, and we've done another three double trebles now. After that, we want to chain three, one, two, and three, and we want to do one more slip stitch into the same chain as we've been doing those double trebles. So we want to go back into that hole, go in through and pull up a loop and then pull through and then your bow is finished and you can fasten off but remember to leave a tail. So here's my bow. I'm not going to show you guys how to pin onto the square. I'm not going to show you how to do the sewing because we've done it so many times now. I'm sure you know how to. Um, you can refer back to the pictures at the beginning of the video if you want to see the placement of where I put everything or even the picture at the end of the video. Um, but of course, I will come back. I'll show you what areas I had to manipulate, if any, once they're sewn on. And then I'll show you how to do the facial features. Hi guys. So it's taken me a while to get back to this um, since I said that I would go off and that bit that you've just watched where I said that I would go on and sew on the face and stuff um, was probably a couple of weeks ago and I've had so much going on at home that I haven't been able to come back to this and that's the reason why I've already gone ahead and sewn the face detailing and everything on as well because I don't want this to take any longer because I know a few of you have been messaging me asking when the next video is out. Um, so I'll just show you for example if you're going to carry on doing um, the characters the same as the Sumsum ones that you requested me to do the, I can't get my words out, if you're going to carry on with the Sumsum characters that you requested for me to make and to redesign, um, the eyes need to be quite low on this one. I don't know if you can see, but the central point, if I go with a needle, is right here in the centre of Donald's face. And the tops of his eyes are in line with that. So what you need to do is attach your black to your needle, and then you would come up, if I can, come up from this point here which is this in line with the center point and then also in line with the side of his mouth so you also also so you almost need to look at that angle which is in line with the center but then also in line with the side of his mouth and then just go inside from so, and then just go and sew from side to side so you're doing that eye and the other one. Remember when you're sewing on your bow that you also need to, like we did with the other one,
go over the centre point several times so you're creating the middle of the bow. I also realised that I've added this bit of his hat on in the wrong place. It's supposed to be up here, but I've done it now and sadly I've glued all my ends in and glued them down. So it wasn't, I wasn't looking at the picture when I sewed it on. So that's my mistake, but I think it looks okay anyway. Um, if you do have difficulty with doing his eyes or this is the first time that you've watched one of my videos, I have shown how to do them in the other characters that we've sewn on. For example, the Mickey and Minnie or probably the best, most detailed one that I did was the Winnie the Pooh face that we did. So just go back and watch them if you want a reminder on how to do them. I know that I said when I filmed the last part that if there was any form of manipulation needed that I would detail that when I came back. And there wasn't, so I don't need to deal that. So I don't need to detail that. And by manipulation I mean where we actually sort of pull things and stretch them into place before we sew them down just to create that different shape. But that wasn't needed at all. So here's my final Donald. He's all finished. I'm still using the glue that I mentioned in one of my other videos to sort of stick down all the ends and I know it doesn't look the best at the back and I probably will end up putting um, a cover on the back of my quilt when it's finished but I just think it makes it look so much neater and I know that it's never going to come undone because it's all glued and it's literally completely why I wouldn't say solid it's not hard it's almost like rubber so they're all stuck down and I just think it's better and I can feel safe in the knowledge that none of it's going to come undone so that's the Donald Square finished and I'll see you soon for the next one bye mm -hmm.